Hey everyone, Vlad here. Thanks for tuning in. Today we've got a few tips and tricks for you for um, some secret doorways and secret uh, floor entrances into your base. And uh, we'll jump right in here to it. All right, so I've got this staged already for you. And uh, you can see several elements in the picture, but I've got a wall with a doorway. That's going to be our simulator entrance that we want to hide. We've got a switch. And then on my second wall, which is a, just a placeholder, so I have a place for that picture frame uh, with some conduits. Then I have a uh, spike board trap and a floor safe. And the floor safe is, is basically um, providing some elevation to that spike board trap so that it's a lot easier for us to place this wire uh, onto the spike board trap. So we're going to start by doing some wiring up front, connecting our two circuits to the switch. And then we're going to take one of the switches or the circuits and connect it to the spike board trap. I've used the safe to get the spike board trap away from the foundation, allowing us to attach this wire. Now we're going to use a trick to get this into position where we want it uh, by just ever so slightly moving the safe uh, just a little bit, um, about three times. And now we can pick it up and move it wherever we want. But we had to do this so that we could attach that wire initially. And we want to make sure that this wire stays connected no matter where we move it. If it disappears, it's no longer connected and you got to start over. So we're in good shape here. All three wires still appear. And we're going to do a similar trick with this picture frame. We're going to move it slightly three times. And now we're going to move it to the back end of this wall to make some additional connections. And this is where it's going to live. Um, once we're finished. Okay, so I'm now going to take the conduit um, that is not connected to the, uh, the spike board trap and connect it to my second switch on the back end. All right, and then um, we're going to make sure that all of our circuits are live. I got to turn this switch on. So you got to know which way is your entrance and exit. But So that switch on the back end of the door is powering the switch on the front end of the door. And so that part is working. So we can keep moving forward, and we're going to place a stash box. Um, but we want it to slightly um, stand on top of this bike board trap. And... Uh, the reason being is when we activate this trap, if something's sitting on top of it, it'll disappear. Technically, it still exists, but it disappears um, until you repair the trap. So that's what we're using for this entire trick. That's the concept we're using. All right, so now we've got our stash box uh, placed. Now, we want to kind of hide our switch. It's not a secret door if everybody can see the uh, switch that opens it. So we're going to use our flamethrower here to destroy the wall. Be careful not to destroy the switch when you're doing this. It may interfere with the connected wires. So uh, we destroyed the wall, which is going to hide our switch. And that's going to allow us to place this trash can, which we're using to hide it, um, really close to the wall. But it's not going to tell us that we can't because that switch is uh, currently invisible due to it being part of that broken wall. And then we're going to repair a wall. And ta-da, we have our switch. Uh, glitched inside of our trash can and now we have a secret entrance uh, here's a look from the back end now the second switch is just there so you can you can close the door behind you so we activate the front one our trap goes off our stash box disappears now we can walk through the door all right, we're going to turn off the power that controls the power to the outside switch, repair our trap, and now our door is good to go. OK, so um, here we're going to be using the same concept, but we're going to um, build a whole entrance into the floor. So you can see I built this first uh, lower floor with no doors. And what our objective is, is to make it to where we hide this little missing piece on the upper deck uh, to make it a secret entrance to the first floor. So we're going to do similar stuff here. We're going to first use the um, 
flamethrower trap to destroy our wall. Now, I chose to do all of the wiring in line this way instead of playing around with moving a bunch of the uh, wires with conduits and stuff. And it's because it's easier to have them not break during the process. Um, so when you can avoid avoid headaches, uh, if you can do some direct wiring in line uh, without moving things around, then I, I suggest doing that because when these things break, you got to start all over. So um, we're actually using a rug this time to elevate our switch, and that's because we want it to hide um, a lot lower to the ground than when we had the safe. And uh, you can see how it makes it to where the spike board trap perhaps like goes lower than the edge of that wall that we destroyed. So we're going to start by connecting that to just one of the conduits down below. And uh, I made sure that the conduits were directly below. They're not halfway across the room. And then I'm going to use the same trick, but we're going to move the rug about three times. And uh, be careful because it does like to break that wire when you move this. So make sure you select the rug and not the trap. If you select the trap, then make sure wire is intact and then start over by moving the rug. But three times should be a, a magic number, ever so slightly moving. And now we should be able to pick it up and move it back wherever we want. And um, my alignment for this was I put it to where the screws of the spike board trap were just sticking out in front of the lip of the door we destroyed. Okay, and so that should be sufficient for what we need. Okay, see, now uh, my wire broke. So this is what I'm talking about. You got to be careful with... Uh, your rug and so do this step first um, because you don't want to get to the end thinking you have it and your wire not be attached to the spike board trap so um, once you have it in position double check for that wire and then try not to move it until you're finished or actually once you're finished don't, don't move it until you're ready to start over All right, so we moved it a few times. I just double check real quick my wires in place. So now we're going to move this in position. And again, the screws kind of right at the lip of the wall we destroyed. Now I am in a um, a workshop, so I can't apply wallpapers to the walls. But if you do plan on doing that, apply them before doing any of this or else as soon as you apply your wallpaper, all your switches and stuff are going to go away because they count as items on the wall. And uh, you don't want that to happen because you're going to have to start over. Now I'm placing this rug. You can kind of see there's positions where it like goes really high floating. And then there's this one that's like right on the edge where there's barely any, any floating being happening at all. And uh, I place those secondary rugs to either side to uh, help hide the fact that it's floating. Same as when we did the door, we put that rug underneath it. So uh, we do have a spike board trap back here. If we activate it, our rug that's placed on top of it disappears. So that's that's what's driving this concept. Now, um, I destroyed the rug while I do the rest of the wire attachments through the through the opening that is there. And we're gonna attach our switch to both of the conduits down below. Now, I put them on that picture frame, but you definitely don't need them uh, on the picture frame. This is our secondary switch. This is where we're going to close the door once it is open from the bottom so that nobody sees it when we're down here in our secret area. And then again, this switch up top that is controlling the main entrance needs to connect to both of the conduits. So basically, one switch is controlling power to the other switch, and then the one up top is controlling the power to the spike board trap. So we're going to turn things off so when we repair this, it doesn't automatically go off. All right. But if we did this correctly, then once we repair it and we activate our switch, we will have a disappearing rug and our secret entrance.
and there it is. So when you jump down, you can turn off that second switch and then repair your trap. And boom, all tidy and you're now in hiding. All right, so I went ahead and finished the, uh, the camp uh, kind of build to kind of show you what a finished product might look like um, with that set up with a disappearing rug. So here we've made a nice little homely like greeting area for anybody who visits the workbench, um, but we've got our, uh, our activation switch hidden in the trash can again. And uh, we've made it feel nice at home, put some workbenches, some things people would use. Um, but they're going to be uh, intrigued to try and figure out how to get into the bottom, or maybe not. Um, but if they do, then I think they'll be pleased. Uh, that's one reason I built it here at the the uh, the, the workshop, because it, it's a place where people would come and visit, possibly, um, especially while that player vending is closed at the moment. All right, and then this is our hidden switch. We'll go ahead and activate that. Oh, what is this? Okay, and now we can drop on down to our hidden little area. And boom, no one's the wiser. And since you've essentially turned off power to the upper switch, no one while you're down here can enter until you turn on uh, the lower switch again. So down here, I just decided to hide some more of the workbenches and put some red lights so that anybody passing by would get the idea that something else was here. So we'll turn on our switch. There goes our rug. Jump back on top. Turn off our switch or else our spike board trap will just immediately go off as soon as we repair it. Do a quick repair here. And we're all good to go. So that's my uh, build tips for you this week. I uh, hope you find some good uses for your hidden entrances. Um, I'd like to see some of them if you do use them. So send me some uh, links in the comments if you decide to do something with this. And uh, thank you again for watching.